to Boozy Bard's production of William Shakespeare's Henry V, Raw. My name is Jeremy Edgar, I am the artistic director of Boozy Bard Productions, and before I do anything else, I need to call my players to the stage. seeing a Shakespeare Raw show for the first time. For those of you who've never been to one of our shows, take a look at your programs, you will see character names, but you will not see actor names. Why is that? You were second off. Uh, the reason for that is the actors do not know who they are going to be playing. I know. But they have to find out via this hat. Woo! Who wants to go first? Oh, everyone's fighting. All right. Nicole Alley, tonight will be... Constable! 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 Okay, last night he was Princess Catherine. And I was so happy. I'm Chorus. Oh, yeah. Chorus! Oh, yeah. Michelle White will be playing... And tonight, we are those players 
but you are those assholes. <laughs> and I want you to play your part just as well as they play theirs. Scratch that. I want you to play your part much better than they are going to play theirs. Oh, Jeremy. I'm being realistic. <laughs> What does that mean? That means I want you to cheer for the hero. That means I want you to boo for the villain. <laughs> Someone found the boo boozella. <laughs> and if you think you got something all funny and clever that you want to yell at one of my actors, go ahead. We've been doing this shit six years. <laughs> We're better than you. <laughs> Speaking of, who's drinking tonight? Hopefully most of you, it's my next place to mess around. <laughs> For those of you who are drinking tonight, there is a drinking game that goes with this show, as there is with every Shakespeare Row show. And this show, as it is a history, we play the standard history drinking game, which is every time the main character's name is said. Oh, yeah. yeah! And also, interesting to note for this particular play, uh, Henry, goes by several different names throughout the course of the play. He goes by, obviously, Henry. He goes by Harry. He goes by Hal. And a couple times he just goes by the name England. <laughs> because when you're king, you can do that. So, anytime his name is said, we all drink. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. <laughs> All right, so uh, that out of the way. Uh, photos. I know that people like to take photos with their phones and stuff. We live in the age of social media and whatnot. Please do that. Take all the photos you damn well please. All I ask is that you share those photos with us, either on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash or on our Instagram page, uh, at boozybart, mke, someone else already had, had at boozybart, and never use it, I don't know what Yes, very rude. Yes, uh, so please take all the photos you want, share those photos with us, because you are much cheaper than a real photographer. I mean, we love to engage with our audience. Had <laughs> a terrible millennium. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, next month, uh, we have one more show here, and tomorrow night, and then on Friday we'll be at Hawthorne Coffee Roasters doing this show again. So if you particularly enjoy the show you saw tonight, uh, come see you again because it'll be with some of different cast. It's a brand new show. But then next month, we will be doing our season closer, the same show we do every October, so there's no need for me to say the name of it. <laughs> yes, if you were, it's on your program, it's on your flyer. I don't need to say it out loud. <laughs> Macbeth, there it says! <laughs> So come, so we will be doing that show, as we do every October, um, October 14th, 15th, and 16th here, and then the 18th at Hawthorne Coffee Roasters. And someone pointed out something very interesting to me the other day. The Wednesday performance of that show will be the 100th performance we have done in this space. So that will be really cool. Uh, so yes, please come to that. Tickets, as always, tickets are ten dollars and five dollars if you're in your Halloween costume. I don't care what your Halloween costume is; it doesn't need to be relevant to what we're doing. You want to come dressed as a sexy Friedrich Nietzsche? Come dressed as a sexy Friedrich Nietzsche. Do it. Sexy sexy there. That's yes. Check out my Facebook page. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, so come back for that. Anything coming up here, best place that they should know about? Uh, just Shakespeare Rod tomorrow night. All right. <laughs> I know for a fact there's also swing dancing every Thursday. But <laughs> so yeah, so if you happen to like that, come back for that. Um, ah, so that just leaves this thing that is still in my hand. This was our casting director. He did his job, and he did his job well. But his job is done for the evening. So he is going to do the same thing that the rest of us do when our job is done. Go hang out at the bar. Yeah. And at that point, he will make a magical transformation from casting director to Shakedown Artist. <laughs> <laughs> now, you guys go out to the bar, you have a few drinks, you have a few laughs. At the end of the day, you throw up the bartender an extra couple dollars, as well you should. It's a right friendly, neighborly thing to do. 
consider this our equivalent to that. If you particularly enjoyed the show you saw at the end of the night and you have a couple extra dollars you'd be able to throw our way, please put them in the hat. If at the end of the night you enjoyed the show you saw but you do not have those extra dollars, God love you all the same. If at the end of the night you did not enjoy the show you saw and you have a couple extra dollars, throw them in the hat so I can afford to do a better show next month. <laughs> I thought it was Thank you. I stole that. I stole that joke from a very successful street busker in New Orleans. <laughs> All right. So I believe I've covered everything that needs to be said. Um, there will be an intermission roughly halfway through, as intermission is meant to be. Uh, yeah, that covered everything. Cast, you guys ready? Yep. Yeah. Close Woo! enough. Bar, are you ready? Oh yeah. <laughs> Most importantly of all, audience, are you ready? Shakespeare's Henry V. Wrong! All for a muse of five that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention, a kingdom to a stage, princes to act, and monarchs to behold the swelling scene. Wow, that's great. Then should he, the warlike Harry, like himself, assume the horde of Mars, and at his heels, leashed in like hounds, should famine, sword, and fire crouch for employment. But pardon me, and gentles all, are uh, the flat honorary spirits that have teared on this unworthy scaffold to bring forth so great an object. <sighs> Can this cockpit of the vast fields of France, or may we cram within this wooden, all the very casks that did affright the air in Agincourt? Oh, oh, pardon, and let us cite this to this great account on your imaginary forces work, for tis your thoughts that now must get our kings, carry them here and there, jump at all times, turning the accomplishments of many years into an hourglass, for the which supply, admit me, chorus to the history, who prologue like your humble patience pray, gently to hear, kindly to judge, our play. Long story short, we have no sense, good luck. <laughs> should not bar us in our claim. And take heed how you embalm our person, how you awake our sleeping sword of war. We charge you, in the name of God, take heed. <laughs> For never two such kingdoms did contend without much fall of blood. Then hear me, gracious sovereign, and you peers, that owe yourselves your lives and services to this imperial throne. There is no bar to make against your highness claim to France. But this that they produce from Faramond, in terum, saculum, pereres, ne sugerent. No woman shall succeed in Salic land, which Salic land the French unjustly glows to be the realm of France. Yet their own authors faithfully affirm that the Salic land is in Germany. Then doth it but appear that the Salic law was not devised in the realm of France. King Pepin, which was disposed of children, did as heir general, being descended of Blithill, was the daughter of King Lothair, and they claimed the title of the crown of France, so that as clear as is the summer sun. May I with right and conscience make this claim. The sin upon my head, dread sovereign, stand for your own, unwind your bloody flag. Yeah. Your brothers, kings, and monarchs of the earth did expect to browse yourself as form a line to go through. The other king of England had nobles richer and more loyal subjects, whose heart have left their bodies here in England and lie pavilion into the fields of France. <laughs> Call in the messenger sent from the Dauphin. Now we are well resolved, and by God's help and yours, the noble sinews of our power, France being ours, We'll bend it to our all or break it all to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now we are well prepared to know the pleasure of our fair cousin Dauphin. Your Highness, lately standing in France, he claimed some certain dukedoms. 
in the right of your great predecessor, King Edward III. In answer of which claim, the prince, our master, says that you savor too much of your youth. He therefore sends you a meter for your spirit, this ton of treasure. And in lieu of his desires, you let the dukedoms that you claim hear no more of you. This the Dauphin speaks. Hmm. What treasure, uncle? Hmm? Tennis <laughs> walls by the dish. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> we are glad that Dauphin is so pleased with us. Is present in your pains. We thank you for. When we have marched our rackets to these balls, we will in France by God's grace place shall strike his father's crown into the hazard and tell the blessed prince this mock hath turned his balls to gunstone and his soul shall stand sore charged for the wasteful vengeance that shall fly with them. For many a thousand widows shall this his mock mock out of their dear husbands, mock mothers from their sons, mock castles down. And some are yet ungotten and unborn that shall have cause to curse the Dauphin storm. So get you hence in peace, and tell the Dauphin his jest will savor but of shallow wit, when thousands weep more than did laugh at it. Very well. So you want him? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You should go. <laughs> this was a merry message. We hope to make the sender blush at it. Therefore, my lords, omit no happy hour that may give furtherance to our expedition. For we have now no thought in us but friends. Save those to God that run before our business. Therefore, list, let every man now rash his task is thought that this fair action may on foot be brought. What's <laughs> up? <laughs> I hear the woman's luck. Uh, thus comes the English with full power upon us, and more than carefully us, it us concerns to answer royally in our uh, Therefore, the Dukes of Berry and Bre Bretagne, of Brabant and of Orleans shall make forth, and uh, you, Prince Dauphin. My most it is most meet we arm us against this fool for peace itself to so not so dull a kingdom. Through war, no known quarrel there is in question. But in defenses, masters, preparations, we should be maintained, assembled, and collected as we were a war in expectation. Therefore, I say it is met that we go forth and seek the sick and feeble parts of France and let us do it with no short fear. For my good liege, she is so kindly, so idly. A scepter so fantastically born by vain, giddy, shallow youths that fear attends her not. Oh, peace, Prince Dauphin. You are too much mistaken for this king. Question your grace, the late ambassadors, what with great state he heard their embassy. How well supplied with noble counselors, how modest an exception, and how, how terrible and constant resolution. But it is not so, my lord high constable. But though we think it so, it is no matter. In cases in defense, it is best to weigh the enemy more highly than he seems. Ah, think we King Harry strong, right. and princes, look you strongly on to meet him. Uh, the kindred of him hath been fleshed upon us, and he is bred out of that bloody strain of that black name, Edward, <laughs> Prince of Wales. This is a stem of that victorious stock. Let us fear the native mightiness and fate of him. <coughs> Ambassadors from Erie, King of England, great. Do great business of your majesty. We'll give some present audience. Go and bring him. Yes. Ah, you see, is this chase is hotly followed, friends. My good self, when we take off the English sword and let them know of what monarchy you are in the head. Said Lord, my liege. It is not so vile a sin, I certainly admit. Ah, from our brother, England. 
drink. Hi. From him, he greets you, your majesty, and wills it in the name of God Almighty that you divest yourself and lay apart the borrowed glories by bent of heaven and law of nature and nations belong to him and his heirs, namely, the crown. To him, when you find it evenly divested from his famed, of his famed, and famous ancestors from his most famous ancestor, Edward III, bid you that you resign <laughs> your crown and your kingdom indirectly held from him, native and a true challenger. Or else, what follows? Oh, bloody constraints! Or if you hide the crown, even in your hearts, you will rake it from it. The fiercest tempest is coming by thunder and earthquake, like Jove if required. He failed to compel that his claim of threatening of my message until the default he has presence here to you. I express three greetings to where's the default? For the default I stand here for him. What to him and what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what to him from England? Scorn and defiance. Slight regard, contempt. Of anything that not be misbecome, the slightest cinder doth the prize at you. Thus says my king. Say if my father went to a fair return. It is against my will, for I desire nothing but out with England to that end as matching to his youth and vanity. I did present him with the Paris balls. <laughs> <laughs> you will make your Paris and you will shake for it. And be assured we'll find a difference. As we are subject in the world bound between the promise of greener days, these are his masters now. Tomorrow you shall know our mind at full. And our fault. <laughs> 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 Thus, with imagined wings, our swift scene flies in motion of no less celerity than that of thought. Work, work your thoughts, and therein see a siege. Behold the ordnance on their carriages, with fatal mouths gaping on girded hall floor. Suppose the ambassador from the French comes back. Tell Harry that the king doth offer Catherine, his daughter, and with her to dowry, some heavy and unprofitable dukedoms. The offer likes not, and the nimble gunner with Linstock. Now the devil's cannon touches, and down goes all before them. Boom! Pow! Sound Boom! Once more into the breach, <laughs> dear friends, once more. Or close the wall up with our English dead. In peace there is nothing so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. But when the blast of war blows in our ears, then imitate the action of the tiger. Stiffen the sinews, summon up the blood, disguise fair nature with hard-favored hard rage. On! On, you noblest English! Dishonor not your mothers. Now attest that those whom you called fathers did to catch you, and you, good yeomen, whose limbs were made in England, show us here the metal of your passion. Let us swear that you are worth your breeding, as you stand like greyhounds in the slips, straining upon the start. <laughs> Games afoot. Follow your spirit, and upon this charge, cry God for Harry, England, and St. George! Drink, drink, drink. Seriously, yell. <laughs>
Will you yield and disavoid, or guilty in defense, be destroyed thus? The Dauphin, whom of suckers we entreated, returns us that his powers are not yet ready to raise so great as he. Therefore, dread king, enter our gates, dispose of us and ours, for we are no longer defensible. <coughs> oh, you, and enter our food. There remain and fortify it strongly against the French. Use mercy to them all. For us, dear uncle, the winter coming on and sickness growing upon our soldiers, we will retire to Calais. Tonight in Harfur, we will be your guests. Tomorrow, for the march, we are in. Be nice to you. As you come at. You want the fuck out of the guitar? Go to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Come and talk to me, Bula. 
Oh, Lord God, I forgot it. The elbow. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call the neck? The neck, madam. The neck. The neck. The neck. The neck. Mm -hmm. Elementum. And the chin. Uh, the sin. The sin. Mm -hmm. Le col de nick. The menton. The sin. The sin. The nick. The nick. The chin. The sin. Oui, son votre honneur est vérité, vos épreuves maintenant, je les vois, à titre droit de natif Angleterre. <laughs> yes, if I may say so, your eyes pronounces the word just like an English native speaker. Ne te cuente prende. Pour la guess la dou, et en peu de tests. I do not doubt, by the grace of God, and in a short time. N'avez-vous pas déjà oublié ce que je veux à He, you haven't forgotten what I taught you? Non, je me s'attend à vos préfélimentes. No, I'll recite it for you right now. The hand, the fingers, the nails, the nails. The nails, the arm, the liver. So hot on you. Oh, forgive me, Your Majesty. The elbow. I think that's good. The elbow. The neck. And the sin. Comment apply pour la paille et la robe? That's what I said. The elbow, the neck, and the seam. What are the words for the foot and the gown? Uh, the foot and the tune. The foot and the tune. Oh, Senor Du. Say so much, say so what the blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> Let us 
smoke joints in hell. Bathroom break, sorry. <laughs> Thing with about shop to find. I am the devil. Why do I have to do this stuff? Why can't he go? Okay, Let him greet England with our shop to find. Up, princess. Up, man, joy. <laughs> with spirit of honor and edge more sharper than your sword. High into the field. Bar hurry England that sweeps through our land with penance painted in the blood of our brewer. Go down upon him, you have power enough. And in a captive chariot into row and bring him our prisoner. This becomes the great story of mine. His mountains are so weak. His soldiers sick and vanished in their march. For I am sure when he shall see our army, those rock his heart into the sea in fear for an, uh, and for achievement offer us his ransom. Therefore, Lord Constable, haste on my job. As fast as I can. <laughs> Christophon, you shall stay with us here in the road. Not so, I beseech you, your majesty. Be patient, be patient. Oh. For you shall remain with us. Now, for Lord Constable and Prince Tom, and quickly bring us word in the evening spot. Says my king. Say thou of the hell of your kingdom. 
Though we seemed dead, we did but sleep. Telling you what it rebuked him at Calfleur. Now we speak and our voice is imperial. England shall repent his follies. Bid him therefore consider of his ransom, which must proportion the losses we have borne, which in weight we answer his pettiness would bow under to this as defiance. <clears throat> and tell him, for conclusion, he hath betrayed his followers, whose condemnation is pronounced. And so far, my king and master, so much my office. What is thy name? Montiore. <clears throat> Thou dost thou, thou thy office fair. Turn thee back and tell thy king I do not seek him now. But could be willing to march on to Calais without impeachment. Go therefore, tell thy master, here I am. My ransom is this frail and worthless trunk. My army but a weak and sickly guard. Yet, God before, tell him we will come on. Through France himself and such another neighbor stand in our way. And so on, Joy, very well. The sun ball our answer is but this. We would not seek a battle as we are, nor as we are, we say we will not shun it. So go tell your master. I shall deliver so. Thanks to your highness. I hope they that will upon us now. We are in God's hand, brother, not theirs. March to the bridge, and now draw us toward night. Beyond the river, we'll encamp ourselves, and on tomorrow, bid them march away. March away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go back to England 
England, England, I'm Henry the Fifth, I am. Sentinels almost receive the secret whispers of each other's watch. Fire answers fire, and through their palely flames, each battle sees the other onward face. Steed threatens Steed in a high and boastful nace, piercing the knight's dull ears. And from the tents, the armorers accomplishing the knights with busy hammering, closing rivets up, give dreadful note of preparation. The country cocks do crow, the clocks do toll, and the third hour of drowsy morning named, proud of their numbers. And secure in soul, the confident and over lusty French do the low rain the English play at dice. And shine the crippled, tardy, gated knight, who, like a foul and ugly witch, doth limp so tediously away. While the poor condemned English, like sacrifices by their watchful fires, sit patiently and inly ruminate the morning's danger, and their gesture sad, investing lank lean sheiks and war worn coats. Presented them upon the gazing moon. So many horrid ghosts. Oh, now who will behold the royal captain of this ruined band, walking from watch to watch, from tent to tent, that hussy? Let him cry praise and glory on his head. For forth he goes and visits all his hosts, bids them a good morrow with modest smile, and calls them brothers, friends, and countrymen. A largesse universal like the sun. His liberal eye doth give to everyone thawing cold fear, that mean and gentle all. Behold, as many unworthiness define, a little touch of Harry in the night. Hey. My favorite point. <laughs> <laughs> good morrow, Miss Marlin. A good soft pillow for their for that good white head were better than the churlish turf of France. <laughs> Not so, my liege, this lodging makes me better, since I may say, now I lie like a king. <laughs> Lend me that cloak. Commend me to the princes in our camp. Do my good morrow to them, and anon, desire them all to my pavilion. I shall, my liege. Smells good. <laughs> shall I attend your grace? Um, no, I and my bosom must debate a while, and then I would no other company could you help me with this <laughs> <laughs> Where is the... I pulled it. It's <laughs> <laughs> very hard, I don't know how this squire. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> not say sorry. Oh, in heaven. But no one will know who we are. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm going for. No one will know who we are. I'm going to go watch a little touch of God, that is the old heart. Thou speakest cheerfully. Thanks, buddy. Oh, what do you do? Frenchman, what do you do with a drunken Frenchman? What do you do with a drunken noise? <laughs> Queen, Bola. I am a friend. <laughs> <clears throat> well, discuss unto me, art thou officer, or art thou base, common, and popular? I am a gentleman of a company. Oh, uh, <laughs> Even so, what are you? <laughs> I, as a good gentleman, as the emperor. Then you are better than the king. Oh, the king is a bark cock. 
<laughs> and the heart of gold and the light of life and him for fame our peasant's good of this most valiant I kiss his dirty shoe and from heart string I love the lovely bully by his name is pistol cork. What's thine? Harry! Oi! Leroy! Oh! <laughs> Leave. Is it Leroy or Leroy? <laughs> oh, alright, Leroy then. Right, that's a Cornish name. Are thou a Cornish crew? No, I am a Welshman. Oh, shit. <laughs> Knowest thou Blueland? Yes. Ah, oh, tell him I'll knock his leak about his pain upon St. Davy's Day. <laughs> Do you not wear your dagger in your cap that day, lest he knock <laughs> it about yours? <laughs> Art thou his friend? And his kinsman, too. Ah, oh, shit. I'll put go thee then. Piss off. <laughs> I thank <laughs> you. I'll be with you. <laughs> well, it starts well with your fierceness. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Mullins! Well, so, in the name of Jesus Christ, speak no word. If you would take pains but to examine the horse of Pompey the Great, you should find, I warrant you, that there is no tittle tottle nor piddle paddle in Pompey's camp. Why, I am the enemy, lad, we hear all that. If the enemy is an ass and a fool and a prating coxcomb, it is meet, think you, that we should also look you be an ass and a fool and a prating coxcomb in your own conscience now. I will speak lower. <laughs> 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 I pray and beseech that you will. <laughs> Though it appears a little out of fashion, there is much care and valor in this Welshman. Wow. Brother John Bates, <laughs> is that not the morning which breaks yonder? I think it be. But we have no great cause to desire the approach of day. We see yonder the beginning of the day. I think we shall never see the end of it. Who goes there? A friend. <laughs> <laughs> Under what captain serve you? Under Sir Thomas Ir Irfingham. Oh! Oh! Well, let me get out of this real quick. <laughs> to be washed off at the next time. Uh, he hath not told his thought to the king. No. No, it is not meet he should. I think the king is but a man. <laughs> as I am. <laughs> the violet smells to him as it doth to me. Yeah. His ceremonies laid by and his nakedness he appears as but a man, therefore, when he sees reasons of fears, as, as we do, his fears out of doubt be of the same relish as ours are. Uh, may show what outward courage he will, but I will believe as cold as night, as tis he could wish himself in things up to the neck. <laughs> and so I would he were, and by him at all adventures, so we were quite here. I think he would not wish himself anywhere but where he is. Then I would be where here, alone. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I could not die anywhere so long as contented as in the king's company, his cause being just and his quarrel honorable. Oh, well, that's more than we know. Or more than we should seek after, for we know enough. <laughs> if we know we are the king's subjects, if his cause be wrong, mm -hmm. our obedience to the king wipes the crime of it out of us. But if the cause be not good, the king 
himself hath a heavy reckoning to make. When all those legs and arms and heads chopped off in battle shall join together at the latter day and cry, All we die at such a place. <laughs> I have a fear there are few die well that die in battle. For how can they charitably dispose of anything when blood <coughs> is their argument? Now, if these men do not die well, it will be a black matter for the king that led them to it. So, if a son that is by his father sent about merchandise to simply miscarry upon the sea, the imputation of his wickedness by your rule should be imposed upon his father that sent him? But this is not so. The king is not bound to answer the particular endings of his soldiers, nor the father of his son. For they purpose not their death, when they purpose their services. Besides, there is no king be his cause ever so spotless to try it out with all his unspotted soldiers. Every subject's duty is the king's, but every subject's soul is his own. Yeah. To certain. Every man that dies ill be ill upon his own head. The king's not to answer to it. But I do not desire he shall answer for me, and yet I determine to fight lustily for him. Uh, I, I myself heard the king say he would not be ransomed. Aye, he said so, to make us fight cheerfully. But when our throats are cut, he may be ransomed. And we'd ne'er be the wiser. If I live to see it, I will never trust his word after. Oh, you pay him then. <laughs> He'll never trust his word after. Come, tis a fool of <coughs> saying. Your reproof is something too round. I should be angry with you if the time were convenient. What's <laughs> <laughs> round me? Okay. Now, let. <laughs> Let it be a quarrel between us, if you live. Whoa, 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 whoa! Be friends, you English fools! <laughs> Alright, be friends! <laughs> we have French quarreled enough! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'll see you. <ya. laughs> <laughs> How the king let our lives, our souls, our debts, our careful wives, our children, and our sins lay on the king. We must bear all. In hard condition, twin born with greatness, subject to the breath of every fool who sense no more can feel by his own ring, ringing. What infinite heart's ease must kings neglect that private men enjoy? And what have kings and privates have not too, save ceremony? What art thou, thou idle ceremony? What drinkest thou of, instead of homage sweet, but poison flattery? <laughs> My lord, your nobles, jealous of your absence, seek through your cap to find you for playing comedy. <laughs> Good sir, collect them all together at my tent. I'll be before thee. <laughs> oh God of battles, steal my soldiers' hearts, possess them not with fear. Take from them now the sense of reckoning and be opposed numbers, pluck their hearts from them. Not today, O oh Lord. Oh, not today, think not upon the fault my father made in com compassing the crown. The Richard's body I have interred, interred anew, and on it have bestowed more contrite tears than from it issued forced drops of blood. Five hundred poor I have in yearly pay, who twice a day their withered hands hold up toward heaven to pardon blood. I have built two chanceries where the sad and solemn priest sings still for Richard's soul. More I will do, though all that I can do is nothing more, since that my penance comes after all. 
imploring, imploring pardon. My liege! My brother's exeter's voice. I, I know thy errand. I will go with thee. The day my friends and all things stay for me. Fighting men, they have a full three score thousand. Ah, there's three, five to one beside. They're all fresh. Just few of the lads. Oh, oh, that we now have here but one ten thousand of those men in England that do no work today. What's that he wishes so? My cousin Westmoreland? No. No, my fair cousin. If we are marked to die, we are now to do our country loss. And if to live, the fewer men, the greater share of honor. God's will, I pray thee, wish not one man more. Further, proclaim it, Westmoreland, through my host, that he hath, which hath no stomach to this fight, let him depart. His passport shall be made and crowns for convoy put into his purse. We would not die in that man's company that fears his fellowship to die with us. This day is called the Feast of Crispian. He that outlives this day and comes safe home will stand at tiptoe when the day is named and rouse him at the name of Crispian. He that shall live this day and see old age will yearly on the vigil feast his neighbors and say, Tomorrow we'll stand Crispian. And he will strip his sleeve and show his scars and say, These wounds I had on Crispian's day. Old men forget, yet all shall be forgot. But he'll remember with advantages what feats he did that day. Then shall our names familiar in his mouth as household words. Harry the King, Bedford, Exeter, Warwick, Talbot, Salisbury, and Gloucester be in their flowing cups freshly remembered. This story shall a good man teach his son, and Christian and Christian shall ne'er go by from this day to the end of the world. But we in it shall be remembered. We few, we have a few, we band of brothers. For he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. Be he ne'er so vile, this day shall gentle his condition. And gentlemen in England now a bed shall think themselves accursed. They were not here, and hold their manhoods cheap while any speaks that fall with us upon St. Christmas Day. <laughs> Show yourself with speed. The French are bravely in their battles set, and with all expedience, charge on us. All things are ready if our minds be so. Perish the man whose mind is backward now. Dost thou now wish for help from England, cuz? <laughs> or a better hat? <laughs> God's will. <laughs> At least with you and I alone, without more help, can fight this royal battle. You know your places. God be with you all. <laughs> <laughs> sell my bones. Good God, why should they mock poor fellows thus? Let me speak proudly. Tell the constable we are but warriors for the working day. Our gayness and our guilt are all besmirched with rainy marching in the painful field. But by the mass, our hearts are in the trim. Harold, save thou thy labor. Come thou no more for ransom, gentle Harold. They shall have none. I swear but these my joints, which if they have is I'll leave them shall yield them little. Tell the constable. I shall, King Harry. And so, fare thee well. Thou never shalt, thou never shalt hear Harold anymore. Aww. I fear thou shalt come more once again for ransom. Thou shalt, soldiers, march away. And how thou pleasant God dispose the day! Ah! <laughs> Shall much disgrace with four or five. 
vile and ragged foils, right ill disposed and raw ridiculous. The name of Asher Cole! Oh, <laughs> 
Edward, the Duke of York, the Earl of Suffolk, Sir Richard Kentley, Dean Gary, anyway. Squire, none else of name and of all other men but five and twenty? We kicked ass. Yeah. <laughs> this <Well>. splendid. <laughs> to the village. And me and death proclaimed upon our host to, to boast of this or to take any praise from God, which is his only. Is it not lawful and please, your majesty, to tell how many is killed? Yes, Captain, but with this acknowledgement that God fought for us. Yes, my conscience, he did us great good. Do we all holy rights? Let there be some non nobles and they veil, dead with charity and closed in clay. And then to Calais and to England, then, where never from France arrived more happy men. It's
pray, nay, pray. No, throw not away. The skin is good for you. <laughs> when you take patience to see leeks here after I pray, you mock at them. That is all. What? Why, leeks is good. Hold you. Bitter uh, as a grove. <laughs> Mm. 
no, 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 Fair Catherine, and most fair, thou <laughs> stage me to teach a soldier terms such as will enter a lady's ear and plead his love suit to her gentle heart? Your Majesty shall mock at me? I cannot speak your England. <laughs> Um, oh, fair Catherine, oh, this is going to be weird. Um, <laughs> if you will but love me soundly with your French heart, I will be glad to hear you confess it brokenly with your English tongue. Do you like me, Kate? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, what? I cannot tell what is like. Me? Oh, yes. Is how you say neck field. An angel is like you, Kate, and you are like an angel. <laughs> such a one, take me, take me, take a soldier, take a soldier, take a king. And what, what sayest thou then to my love? Speak, my fair, and fairly, I pray thee. <laughs> Different play. <laughs> Different play. Is it possible that I should love? The enemy of France? Just as possible as it is that I am no longer translating. <laughs> 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 no. no, it is not possible that you should love the enemy of France, Kate. But in loving me, you should love the friend of France. 
<laughs> For I love France so well that I will not part the village of it. <laughs> I will have it all mine. And Kate, when France is mine, and I am yours, then yours is France, oh. and you are mine. Notwithstanding the poor and untempering effect of my visage. Now be true my father's ambition. He was thinking of civil wars when he got me. Therefore, I was created with a stubborn outside, with an aspect of iron. <laughs> that, that when I come to woo ladies, I, I fright them. But in faith, Kate, the elder I was, the, the better I shall appear. I'm going to say that next time I'm going to be My comfort is that in old age, that ill layer of beauty can do no more. Spoil upon my face, since I can get better than this. <laughs> thou, if thou hast me, thou hast me at the worst, and thou shalt wear me, if thou wear me better and better, and therefore tell me, most fair Catherine, will you have me? Come, you are answering broken music, for thy voice is music, and thy English broken. Oh, sure, that's got to be a compliment, right? <laughs> Therefore, queen of all, Catherine, will thou have me? Yes. 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 Do what you like, I'm going to be dead at 34. That is said, plays the Roman array. Nay, it will please him well, Kate. It, it, it shall please him well, Kate. Then it shall also content me. Upon that, I, I kiss your hand. No, 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 Oh, good 
God, that's a lot of French for you to say. La sève, mon Seigneur, la sève, la sève. Moi, je n'aime point que vous abaissez vos très bien d'or. En bas, c'est la main de un de vos très. Si vous l'avez, c'est le terre. Excusez-moi. Kate, 
and bear me witness all that here I kiss her as my sovereign queen. I don't have to. No, I'm <laughs> that they lost France and made his England bleed, which all of our stage have shown, and for their sake, in your fair minds, let this be set to stake. I want to thank you all so much for coming out tonight. I want to thank Tom for holding down this director. 